Morning, Jason. Did you want to chat about something? Yeah, so we've got a bit of a situation. I approved an application. It said it was going to help with productivity. Now, this application, it looked totally legit. It had four stars and everything. Okay. What was the app called? It's called Productivity Rocket 3000. It needed permissions to everyone's emails, calendar, contacts, and a bit of directory stuff. You know, the usual. Jason, that's not the usual. Did it ask for mailbox read-write permissions? Did it ask for directory read-all permissions? Or, I don't know, access to everyone's team's chats? Yeah, no. But it had four stars. And now our CFO is getting ads for crypto productivity coaching on LinkedIn. Do you not see the issue here, Jason? Look, I thought it was just some kind of motivational plug-in. Look, Jason, I think we've spoke about this before, haven't we? Just because an application looks useful, it doesn't mean it's safe. That is why application security in Microsoft 365, it really matters. So, what do we do? Well, to begin with, Jason, we're going to audit all the applications in Microsoft 365. We're going to look at the permissions that these applications have. And more importantly, what these permissions mean. And then we're going to lock down user consent so they can't install their own apps. And then finally, we're going to create an admin approval workflow so this doesn't happen again. Got it. No more rocket apps now. Exactly. Let's get on to it. So let's talk about what just happened. In Microsoft 365, applications usually means apps connected to your environment through Microsoft Enter ID. Now, these apps could be third-party applications. They could be Microsoft applications, or they could be custom internal apps. And they request permissions to access your data within your Microsoft 365. Now, some of those permissions are really powerful. And if you're not careful, an application could have admin level access without going through any IT controls. And guess what? By default, users can consent to applications in Microsoft 365. And that can be risky if you don't control it properly. Now, I see some common problems all of the time. Things like over-permissioned apps, malicious applications, or a lack of visibility. So IT aren't really aware of what is going on. And no approval access. Now, once an app has been granted access, it doesn't need a password. It just does its thing quietly in the background. That is why securing apps in your Microsoft 365 is crucial. And that is why I'm making this video. So let's begin by diving right into the Microsoft 365 admin portal and looking at applications. Okay, I've signed into the Microsoft 365 admin center in my test tenancy. So where do I find these applications? Well, I go down to admin centers and I go to identity and that launches the Microsoft Entra Admin Center. So if you look under Entra ID and then go to Enterprise Applications, you will see our applications. Now this is a test tenancy. So you can see I've not really got a lot here, have I? Okay. We can look at the application type. I can look at the Microsoft applications. Okay. We should have a load more here now. I've not added any of these. These were all spun up when I spun up the tenant, okay? So these are all here by default. But the enterprise applications is the one that we need to pay attention to. Now, as I've said, there are not many applications here because this is a test tenancy. So let's hop over to another tenancy, one that is used more often and one where there's more applications that we can look at. Okay, we've hopped over to here. You can see now, look, there's a lot more going on within this tenancy, okay? Lots of things happening. Now I can click into any of these. So why don't we click into here? Sophos email, okay? You know what Sophos is. This is obviously some kind of Sophos email protection. And I can click into this application. 
Now, what I'm most concerned about in terms of security is under here, security and permissions, okay? And I've got two tabs. I've got admin consent and I've got user consent. So firstly, what's the difference between user consent and admin consent? Well, starting with user consent, this means that a regular user can approve an app for their own data, okay? This can be safe for low risk things like maybe reading their profile. When it comes to admin consent, this is required when applications are asking for high privileged permissions or maybe tenant wide access. So only admins can approve these applications, okay? Now we're gonna talk about best practice later in the video and how you should handle things like user consent applications. Okay, now let's talk about something else. Let's talk about the permissions, the all important permissions. Now in Microsoft 365, permissions for applications come into two main types and the type is listed here. So all the permissions here are application permissions. Now, the second type is delegated permissions. So let's start with delegated permissions. So delegated permissions work on behalf of a signed in user. So for example, if our IT admin, Jason, he's connected an app, this app can only do what Jason can do, okay, with delegated permissions and only whilst Jason is signed in. So maybe something like Calendly or something like that, okay, that might need delegated permissions. Now, these are usually lower risk, but some delegated permissions can still be dangerous, okay? Things like directory read.all, which essentially lets an app read every user in the organization, okay? Now let's talk about application permissions, which are actually these here, okay? These don't rely on any signed in user. They're basically running the background with their own identity and they can access data right across your Microsoft 365 tenancies. So these are really high privileged by nature. Okay, and you can see here, look, mail, read, write. Read and write mail in all mailboxes. Okay, read directory data for everyone in the organization so these are these are high privileged permissions now it might just obviously sophos is a well-known name it's this is sophos email protection so these need to do this okay but if this was a, an application that you didn't recognize for example then this could be a real problem now applications that need this level of access will always require admin consent to install okay and you want to be very sure that they actually need that level of access. You know, I've seen some applications before where they need so much access. You know, we've gone back to the application vendor and said, this is too much, okay? So the key points here, delegated permissions can often be approved by users unless we restrict that, which I'm gonna show you later in the video. Whereas application permissions like these ones here will always require admin approval and you should immediately have some kind of process in place to make sure that that app is actually okay. So what next? So now we've got an idea about applications in Microsoft 365, the next step is to take a look at securing how this whole process works. How do we do this? Well, we do this by restricting consent and setting up something called admin approvals. Shall we take a look at that? Okay. Okay, back in the Enter Admin Center of our test tenancy. So Enter ID, we'll go back to Enterprise Applications, under Security, Consent and Permissions, okay? Manage, so we've got User Consent, Admin Consent and Permission Classifications, okay? So this is a test tenancy straight out of the box, really. I've not really done much security on here. And the first thing is here, look, User Consent Settings. This is controlling when end users are allowed to grant consent to applications, okay? User consent for applications. And look at the default. Allow user consent for apps. All users 
can consent to any app to access the organization's data. Now, you might be thinking the same as I am. This is not the right security setting for any business. So we've got a couple of other options. Firstly, we can flip that and say, do not allow user consent. So an administrator will be required for all applications. This is the setting that I choose for my customers, okay? But Microsoft do throw you a recommended one. Allow user consent for applications from verified publishers. And if we click on here, we will get this little link here, which basically takes us to this one here. In fact, I will just click on that. Click on OK. So basically, what this is saying is any low-risk applications. So if an application just wants to sign in and read the user's profile, then we'll let the user install this application. Okay. We can add different permissions. Okay. So again, this really depends on your appetite. Okay. Do you want users to install apps? Do you want your users to install some apps? Or do you want everything to come to admin? Now, when we talk about everything coming to admin, you can see here, look, admin consent requests. Okay, so if some, something comes here, if I just actually flip over to the live tenancy now, because I've got a decent example of this, here we are. I've got a couple of pending applications. So when someone has submitted this, okay, and what we've got to do, we've got to look at it. So you've got more information here app details, who it's been requested by, the application name, okay? We can review permissions and consent, so we can come into here, and it tells us exactly what this app would like to do. And we might think this is acceptable, and we can accept it, okay? We can block it, we can deny it. So it really is up to you. You can, you can block users from installing applications. There might be a bit more admin work you need to do because users will call your help desk and they'll say, I'm trying to install this app. Please can you consent to it within the admin portal? Okay. So that basically is admin approval. Okay. So hopefully that all makes sense. We now have some tighter controls about the applications in our Microsoft 365, but you might have another question. What question? Yes, that's the one. What about all the applications that are already in our Microsoft 365? Surely we should clean those up. Is there a way to do this? Well, let's take a look. So a potential way to know if applications are still in use is to use something like Defender for Cloud Apps. Now, I've got a video on my channel all about that, but that, that does involve an additional license. So I'm not going to cover that in today's video. Is there any way to know if an application is in use by using this portal here? Well, the answer is not really, okay? Unfortunately, there's not, there's not a field that says last used or anything like that. So what would be my fallback approach for your business? What would be my checklist? Firstly, your knowledge of the business. If you're working in IT, you might recognize some applications in here that you absolutely know are used, okay? It might be a backup application. It might be some kind of security application, and you know it's in use. So you don't need to be really concerned about that. Secondly, you might see some applications in here that you know aren't getting used. You know, perhaps uh, there's one here, look, call to Teams. You might know that actually you moved away from this product a couple of years ago. It's still here. You know you're not using it, okay? So that will be a prime example to go in and get rid of. The applications that perhaps you don't recognize, okay, that's still here, what I would be doing is I would probably go into these applications and I would be looking firstly at the permissions and I'd be looking at what types of permissions these need, okay? Are these high risk permissions? Are we happy with this? Is there anybody in the business who knows about this application, okay? So again, this isn't technical. This is just, you know, being a bit, bit of detective work, if you like. And then finally, if you're really unsure, and it might seem like a bit of a gung-ho approach, but it's been used in the past, you could click no here, enable for users to sign in. This essentially disables the application, 
okay and you can save that it doesn't delete it or anything like that now under this situation you you will soon soon know if the application is in use because you've disabled it and people might ring the help desk but that is a decent way to check so there's no science to it it's a bit detective work but that's what you can do within this portal go through every application and just build up knowledge of the application. And that is it for today's video. That is applications in Microsoft 365, an overlooked area for many businesses. I hope you've enjoyed it. Look forward to seeing you again soon.